Toronto has been on lockdown for over two weeks now and right before everything closed I quickly managed to go to the Indigo bookstore which becomes the embodiment of holiday spirit during winter. And aside from buying just a couple of books to get me through this waiting game we're all in now, I got inspired enough to finally put up my lights since it looks like the lockdown measures would be in place at least in Toronto till the end of the year, which I just realized also are not visible during daylight. And since reading will probably be one of the main activities during this dwelling in your apartment holiday season, I thought I'd share a few fiction, eight to be exact, books that I've been enjoying, which have also been quite page turners for me. As usual, I'm going to split them up into four categories and uh, let's start with the first one. This might seem at first as a slightly strange recommendation, but this was one of my best finds of the year. Whether you've read Harry Potter and or watched the movies, I recommend you check out Harry Potter and Methods of Rationality. It is the first fan fiction I've personally ever read and I'm out of words for how amazing this book is. Imagine that instead of marrying Uncle Vernon, Aunt Petunia ended up marrying an Oxford physics professor. So when Harry was dropped off on her doorstep by Dumbledore, he was an only child raised in a house overflowing with books by loving foster parents who've prioritized his education. Harry considers himself a future scientist and at Hogwarts he decides to test and learn magic using scientific approach and methods of rationality. Elizar Yudkowsky, the author, is an AI researcher and all principles and theories mentioned in this book are real. So the basic theory of knowledge, cognitive biases, evolutionary psychology, social psychology, and even quantum mechanics. And apart from how wonderfully clever the world of magic and science are brought together, the book's humor is just absolutely wonderful and I could not put it down. I've read this one in Russian. Sometimes I do go for Russian translations to make sure I don't lose proficiency of the language and since finding a print version of this book was a challenge due to JK Rowling copyright issues I managed to get my hands on this one. This book is available publicly for anyone to read um, at the official website so you can even technically go and start reading it right now um, and I absolutely love the annotation that is printed on the back of all of the books as well as on the website which says that Harry Potter belongs to JK Rowling Methods of rationality belong to no one. I've uh, recently read Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale and Testaments, as well as A Brave New World by Aldous Huxley that I want to include in this category. There are only a small handful of books that have really affected me in a personal way, and Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale is one of them. Last year, I had a chance to attend the Twitter fireside conversation with Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, and Margaret Atwood, where they talked about writing, creativity, and all things Twitter, and Margaret Atwood during that conversation mentioned that she has just finished working working on uh, her new book, which turned out to be Testaments, but it was overall just amazing to be in the same room with her and hear her speak. In The Handmaid's Tale and its second part, The Testaments, Margaret Atwood describes the life in the not-too-distant future where the United States has been transformed through a military coup into a totalitarian theocracy. Uh, this dystopian and, well, feminist horror story is made all the more real by the bridge that Atwood has created between the world we know now today and the world that could potentially be in that distant future, not so distant future, because the story's main protagonist still remembers the time before the change. And this is to my knowledge a unique element in the dystopian genre because in many other books that I've read the setting is sometime in the far far future and there seems to be little hope for change or revolution. And the next dystopian novel is A Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Unlike any other dystopian books I've read there is no violence involved in Huxley's world. It's just as controlling and scary but it's done in a more indirect way. People don't go missing in the night like um, in 1984 or beaten stone to death like they are in Handmaid's Tale, but they have just as little freedom, even if they don't realize it themselves. Everyone is trained from birth to think and uh, feel in a certain way, and if they ever deviate from the tasks that they were born to do, they are fed drugs that induce happiness. Everyone's happy, everyone has what they want, and everything is based on logical principles. At the beginning of the book, the writing style 
is also very interesting. It was nothing that I've ever encountered in any other book I've read, and it literally felt like a vortex, and um, I couldn't put the book down. I just kept turning pages to find out what would be happening next because of this rhythm that the writing has. There are two books in this category by Theodore Dreiser that I want to share. I discovered his books during the first lockdown and read Trilogy of Desire novels as well as American Tragedy. The Financier, the Titan, and the Stoic Trilogy of Desire novels cover the story of Frank Halperwood's life, who is a brilliant, aspiring financier trying to pave his way up towards wealth through corruption, greed, social pressure, whatever it takes him. These novels' backdrop is the United States second half of 19th and beginning of the 20th century. What I found extremely interesting is that Dreiser does not express any opinion towards the main character, allowing you to basically form one as you read. So I was constantly torn between admiring him as a character and criticizing all of his actions. If it grows slowly on you, don't worry, it becomes a very fast page turner later on. And the second book is based on an actual criminal case and it is American Tragedy, the story of Clyde Griffiths, Griffiths, Clyde Griffiths, 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 I can never pronounce his name, who spends his life in the desperate pursuit of success and prestige. Uh, Theodore Dreiser is a master when it comes to building character, so like in Trilogy of Desire, you end up sympathizing and rooting for the main hero, hoping that he will find whatever it is that he's looking for. As Clyde's story progresses, you become more and more confused, torn, and end up flipping between liking him since you know him and understand him and his thinking, um, and hating him for what he's done. And because of that, <laughs> questioning your own morals in a way. Uh, there was an article published in The New Yorker that speaks a bit more about Theodore Dreiser's writing and American tragedy. It does give away the plot, but I'll link it down below if you're curious to know more about this novel. And to end this video on a slightly more uplifting note, I want to include these two books here, with the first one, um, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Somehow I always end up returning to it, no matter what, well, to these two books actually, and I end up rereading them every two or three years. So The Alchemist is a story about a shepherd boy, Santiago, who travels from his homeland in Spain to the Egyptian desert searching for treasure buried near the pyramids. This book has at this point crossed the boundaries of books and has taken a life of its own, creating a worldwide movement. But for me, it always serves as a good inspiring reminder to follow your dreams and find your path. A very similar book to Alchemist is The Seagull Jonathan Livingstone by Richard Bach, which is about well, Seagull Jonathan, who determines that the purpose of his life is um, to master the art of flying. And uh, once again, these two just always serve as good inspiring reminders to me to um, basically follow dreams. And I think on this note it would be all for this video. If you do have any book recommendations please let me know because I'm strongly considering doing um, another reading challenge next year and I'm currently looking for my next read. But thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!